Hello everyone and welcome back to Bitly Toes Beatles channel. Lovely to have you here. Thanks for joining me for this video and I hope you're all doing well. Well, what a week that was. Uh, last week, Wednesday to Friday, a very emotional week, a very hectic week um, for me, trying to get three videos out in three days. And then we did the live stream on Sunday. And while I'm here, thank you everyone who showed up for the live stream and there were loads of you. We chatted for two and a half hours and I had an absolute blast uh, talking to you all. So thank you everyone who was on the stream and people who contributed by writing things in the comments and stuff like that. Uh, it was an absolute blast and a pleasure uh, to do and chat with you all. Now, after the events of last week, uh, I'm kind of, I'm still buzzing. I'm still kind of buzzing. And uh, if I, you know, I'm kind of feeling uh, proud, if that doesn't sound too stupid and a little bit sick, sycophantic, I don't know. Um, I'm kind of feeling proud of the Beatles and the team, Giles, Peter Jackson, you know, everyone who made uh, what we got last week happen. Uh, because I'm really, really happy with everything that we got. It was kind, of, it was worth the wait, and uh, you know, just still sort of uh, buzzing from it. But there might be one little cherry to go on top of that cake, and that would be if we get the Beatles at number one uh, this Friday here in the UK. Um, it's not the most important thing in the world to get to a number one. It would just be really, really nice. And um, I've Googled, I've Googled what is the longest gap between number one singles on the UK chart uh, by the same artist. And the current holder of that record is Kate Bush. Uh, she had Wuthering Heights at number one in 1978 and she had Running uh, Up That Hill, Boyd, by Stranger Things uh, in June 2022. So that's 44 years. That is the current record of gaps between number ones by the same artist in the UK chart. Now, if the Beatles were to be number one on Friday, and I don't know whether they will, the competition is stiff, but if they were, uh, this would be a new record for the UK because the last Beatles number one in the UK was the Ballad of Johnny Oka in 1969. If Now and Then makes it to number one, uh, that will be a gap of 54 years. That will be a record. So fingers crossed, fingers crossed. Can you go and stream the life out of it and uh, <laughs> see if we can get it uh, to number one? Uh, that would be lovely, be lovely. Anyway, We've got this little gap, a little lull in proceedings between uh, what we had last week and the Red and the Blue album, which uh, drops on Friday. Uh, so I thought I'd do a nice, easy uh, video to sort of fill that um, gap. Um, it's just a show and tell video. I'm just going to show you um, some vinyl um, that I bought, you know, that I've bought in the last few weeks. Um, it's all coloured vinyl. So it's a coloured vinyl bonanza and none of it is... Beatley, uh, none of it is a, is Beatles related, but I have got one item that is Beatles related that I'm going to show you, but that's not vinyl, so I'll get to that in a minute. Now, you may be wondering, or actually, you might not actually give a toss, but you may be wondering why I haven't shown all my Now and Then singles, and uh, the reason for that is uh, I cocked up big time. Uh, I realised this sort of halfway through the week, um, that when I did my order at Beatles.com, uh, when it when the announcement came and I ordered all my singles and I ordered the red and the blue album packages that I wanted, I did them all on the same order. Uh, absolute schoolboy error, and I'm old enough and been doing this long enough uh, to know better, uh, but it was a mistake. So I don't expect I will get anything until Friday. I haven't had a thing yet and that's why I haven't shown anything. I have had a dispatch notice from HMV about my red 12 inch vinyl uh, single that is coming uh, but I haven't even had a dispatch notice from Beatles.com yet so Lord knows when that is going to arrive. I hope it's going to arrive on Friday but I've got a feeling that it probably won't but when it does come uh, you will. I will be doing uh, an unboxing video obviously. 
Okay, uh, let's get on with what I'm going to show you. So the first thing that I'm going to show you is Beatles related, um, and it's this picture from the Eyes of the Storm book, Paul's, Paul's book. This was my favourite picture from the book, and um, uh, Mrs. Beatley Tone knew it was my favourite picture from the book. I just love this picture. This picture is taken on West 58th Street crossing 6th Avenue in New York, and uh, you know, I just love the idea of Paul, you know, just, you know, photographing all these people chasing after the Beatles car uh, out of the back window of the car that he's in. I just love that. And uh, when we went to see the um, the exhibition, uh, she secretly bought it for me. I don't know how I didn't see it. I was probably looking at all the other merch and she nipped in and bought this. So she bought that and she gave me that as a kind of retirement present. So that is going to be um, on the wall uh, behind me I'm not sure where I think maybe just maybe sort of just there underneath the uh, Abbey Road crossing thing uh, so uh, probably that will be there for my next video or maybe not I'm not uh, I'm not a, I'm not much of a DIY bloke so it's why I'll, I'll say I'll do it later I'll do it later anyway uh, so that that was that okay now I'm going to show you uh, some coloured vinyl that I've picked up over the last few weeks. I forgot to mention that the picture also comes with a hype sticker or hype label, as Mrs. Beatley Town calls them. Um, but, and there it is, that's the hype sticker that the picture comes with. But I can't for the life of me get it off of this piece of plastic. So I don't really know what to do with it uh, because I can't know where to stick it really. I was gonna stick it on the back of the, the picture, but I can't get it off. It's but I might have to cut it out and maybe uh, sellotape it on the back. I don't know. It's quite disappointing, really. So most of the records that I'm going to show you are still sealed. So we're going to do sealed to reveal. But this first one I have actually opened. And that is this one here, Fat Pop by uh, Paul Weller. Uh, I've been a Paul Weller fan uh, since about 1977. I followed him in the jam. I followed him in the style council. And I followed him in uh, as a solo artist so he's a bit like paul mccartney in a way he's been successful uh with three different bands or you know as two bands and being a solo solo artist and this album is from 2021 and uh it's a bit of a return to form after a few sort of you know mediocre albums really good really good album very poppy uh there's the back that's the track listing uh, if you're interested and uh, I have actually opened this one so I'll show you what you get inside it you get this great big uh, poster which I might try and open hang on I might try and open um, it's got it's a bit like the White Album poster because it's got lyrics on the back uh, but on the front it's kind of like that very nice very nice I won't be putting it on my wall though. And uh, it's the inner sleeve uh, with a picture of Paul looking as morose as ever. And uh, this one is on uh, very nice translucent yellow vinyl. So that is Paul Weller uh, Fat Pop. Uh, the hype sticker is kind of I always put the hype sticker on the inside of the uh, of the jacket if there's like a printed in a sleeve so that is Paul Weller fat pop very happy to have that I've had it on CD uh, since it came out in 2021 but I saw it was coming out on colored vinyl I thought ah, I love that I love that okay so the next one is still sealed and this is a a picture disc of uh, David Bowie's man who sold the world uh, now this is an album that I've um, I've never had before on vinyl. Sorry about the glare. That's the track list in there. This is his album from uh, 1970. I've had it on CD, but I've never had it on vinyl before. So let's get it open. Let me just take the, uh, the hype sticker off. It says, the hype sticker says, poster enclosed. Let's see if they're telling the truth. I'll just get the hype sticker off because they're much easier to put somewhere else once while they're while they're still on in the plastic. Okay. Okay. So that's with the 
with the shrink off. Okay, what have we got? We do have a poster. We do have a poster. Let's put that there for a minute. So there is the poster. It's the, uh, you know, the, the front cover of the album, the replacement front cover of the album, because the original album came uh, with David Bowie laid out on a sort of chaise lounge, uh, wearing a dress, which they decided was inappropriate uh, in 1970. So they changed it. Um, yeah, the, this inner sleeve here with the words to the songs. Uh, this is a fantastic album. This is probably, you know, it's, I guess it's his, it's kind of his second sort of rock album. Um, there is the picture disc. It comes in this sort of uh, plasticky sleeve. Very nice indeed. I don't, I'm not sure, does this count as coloured vinyl even though it's black and white? Fantastic picture. That is really, really lovely. Okay, so that's David Bowie's uh, The Man Who Sold the World picture disc. Obviously, this is a, a reissue. So the next album I'm going to show you is this one, The Roaring Forty by Billy Bragg. Uh, this is a compilation album uh, celebrating 40 years of uh, Billy Bragg's career, uh, 1983 to 2003. Now, I'm not sure how well known Billy Bragg is outside the UK. To be fair, he hasn't had that many hits um, in the UK, but he's probably best known uh, for writing the song A New England for Kirsty McColl, who had a massive hit um, with, that, with that song. And um, I've, I've liked Billy Bragg for a long time and uh, I own everything that he's done on CD, but I've never had a, 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 an album on vinyl by, by him. And because this, was on, this is on coloured vinyl, I thought I would get it. Um, Billy Bragg sort of started his career as a kind of a punk. He was in a punk band called Riff Raff. Um, they had a very minor hit called Romford Girls. Billy Bragg is from Essex. He's known as the Bard of Barking and his lyrics are very poetic, uh, sometimes very clever. He started off his solo career, just him and electric guitar, Telecaster. Uh, no drums, no bass, nothing. Uh, but his songs very quickly uh, developed over the years and he started doing full band arrangements and uh, you know, talking about non-political stuff because most of his early stuff in the 80s was very political, uh, very anti-Thatcher and anti-Thatcherism. Uh, so mo mostly related to the UK, but he does also write songs about American politics as well. A typical example of that would be God Save the Youth of America. And so, um, you know, really, a really, really good songwriter. And uh, I thought I would pick this album up. It was only 28 quid uh, for a triple album on coloured vinyl, which I thought was really good value. Is that the biggest hype sticker you have ever seen? Uh, so let me just take that off and um, put it somewhere safe before I take the plastic off. Okay. Let's get it open. Now, this is a triple album. Uh, so it's called The Roaring Forty, and there are 40 tracks on it. It contains all of his singles and a few key album tracks as well. And uh, I believe this is on three different shades of green vinyl. That is the back sleeve. I'll show you the track listing. Uh, if you want to pause the video. And it's not a gatefold. It's all the all the albums are sort of stuffed inside. Uh, but you know the, there are some fantastic songs on here. Levi Stubbs's Tears, um, Between the Wars, uh, St Swithin's Day, uh, The Milkman of Human Kindness. What a fantastic title! Uh, Help save the youth of America. Greetings to the new brunette. Uh, he does do uh, a version of She's Leaving Home, which is on this album. Uh, she's got a new spell and probably my favourite 
Billy Bragg song of all time, uh, Must I Paint You a Picture? Uh, but, you know, every single song in, on this is fantastic. I would thoroughly recommend this album. Not that I've played it, but, I've, you know, I know all the songs because I say I've got the CD. So let's have a look at the vinyl. That's the inner sleeve there. Little track listing on there. This one is a, a very dark, or it's not actually dark when you hold it up to the light. That's the first LP. It's the second LP. Looking very young there in the 80s. Beautiful, really nice vinyl. I do love a bit of coloured vinyl. And finally, the third LP there. If you don't know Billy Bragg, I would thoroughly recommend you sort of check him out on Spotify. Go and listen to some of his stuff because uh, really, really fantastic. That's nice as well, and very unusual for the third LP, that colour. That is lovely. Okay, from the relatively obscure uh, Billy Bragg to the very much mainstream uh, Fleetwood Mac, Rumours Live. Um, there is the hype sticker for it. Uh, obviously, this album is a double album taken from the Rumours Tour 1977. Um, it says that it is on uh, its limited edition on crystal clear vinyl. Uh, so let's have a look. Get it open. Okay. So there it is. That's the back cover. There is the track listing. And this one is a gatefold. Quite an amazing picture looking out at the audience. Okay, let's have a look. So polyline inner. Crystal clear vinyl, they say. Let's have a look. Well, that is pretty crystal clear, I guess. That's LP1. I don't expect LP2 is any different. Nothing else included, just the records. Everybody loves the Rumours album, don't they? Very nice, very nice. So that is uh, Fleetwood Mac Rumours live. Previously unreleased show recorded live at the Forum, Inglewood, California in 1977. So that's Rumours on Crystal Clear Vinyl. And so finally, the last album that I'm going to show today is this one. This is Oasis, uh, The Master Plan. Uh, this is the 20th, 25th anniversary edition, a coloured vinyl exclusive. And you know what? I can't remember what colour uh, this is. So you're going to be finding out at the same time as me. Now, this album, The Master Plan, this is Oasis's, uh, if Oasis is, is the word, uh, Oasis's, uh, past masters albums this has all the um b-sides or extra tracks that they put on their singles and uh, i never ever owned this album uh because you know i was quite a big Oasis, oasis fan back in the day and i bought all the singles as they came out so i had all the tracks that were on it so i've never actually had uh this this album before uh so um uh, let's uh get it open let me get the um the hype sticker off. Obviously, Oasis, uh, very influenced by the Beatles. And you look at this sleeve, 
the, the teacher there, uh, very much looking like Paul McCartney. And uh, this uh, chap here, here, you can just about see some granny glasses. Is that supposed to be John Lennon? I don't know. That is the back cover of the album, uh, just a picture of Isis rehearsing. And I would show you what the track listing is, but it is so poorly uh, printed on there that you wouldn't be able to read it. So there is no point. So this album is a gatefold, does have a gatefold. Uh, it's got an essay by Paul DeNoyer about all the songs that are on the album and then some pictures on that side. Um, the inner sleeve, no poly line sleeve with this, um, has got the lyrics to the songs on it and you get a close up there of the teacher. It's not Paul McCartney at all. So the tracks on uh, this this disc is our uh, Talk Tonight, Going Nowhere, Acquiesce and Underneath the Sky, all brilliant. Um, on side two, uh, we've got the live version of I Am The Warus, which is rubbish, um, Fade Away and The Swamp Song, uh, which is also not all that either. Um, Oasis very much like the Beatles and the jam, uh, the fact that they threw away so many really good songs um, as B-sides on their their singles. Most uh, Oasis singles had four four tracks on it and, uh, um, you know, so I bought them all and uh, there's some really good stuff that they've just thrown away on, on this. So let's have a look at the... Uh, at the vinyl. Look at that. Sort of a grey marbled, I think if I turn it like that you can see the marbling better. Very, very nice. wonder if uh, the second disc is the same colour. So that's the inner sleeve uh, from the other one and you can see the guy with the glasses is not really supposed to be John Lennon at all, but I think they kind of, you know, they left the in insinuation there. Uh, lyrics again on the back. Uh, so this is, this has got Rocking Chair, a uh, great song, one of the B-sides on the roll with its single, uh, Half a World Away, uh, which you might know as the, uh, the theme tune to the Royal Family. Uh, that was from the Whatever single. And uh, Listen Up, which was on C Cigarettes and Alcohol. And then on the other side, we've got Head Shrinker from Some Might Say, uh, The Master Plan, uh, which was on the Wonderwall single. Uh, it's Good To Be Free on the um, uh, Whatever single and Stay Young uh, from the B-side of Do You Know What I Mean. Uh, really, really strong album. And uh, The Master Plan is the track, The Master Plan. Absolutely superb. Looks like this one is the same. It's that sort of grey marbled vinyl. Again, very, very nice. So very pleased to have that, along with all of these uh, records that I've shown you uh, today. OK, time to wrap this one up, I think. If you want to say anything about any of these records that I've shown today, please do so down in the comments. You know, I read all your comments. I will respond to all your comments. That is pretty much it from me. I uh, hope you've enjoyed this video. Thanks very much for watching and hopefully uh, the next video will be the unboxing of the Red and Blue album on Friday. So I will uh, see you then. Fingers crossed. Bye-bye.